This was supposed to be the second and final video about the blaster board, a slot 1 motherboard with a touch of Creative Labs. This board features a Sound Blaster Live audio chipset. In a previous video, you have seen me fix this board which was rescued from my recycling center. When I got the board, there were many cut traces, old solder joints that needed to be reworked, and a few bent pins on ICs. After dedicating numerous hours to resolving visible issues, the board booted again, displaying an all assuring boot screen. For this video, I wanted to test the Sound Blaster Live onboard chip and compare it with the PCI version of this sound card. Until now, we haven't heard any audio signal generated by this board. But as you will see in today's video, old retro hardware does not care for my plans. I guess I have to retract my statement in the previous video. I am so relieved that it looks like there was nothing else wrong with this board. But let's start from the top. In my previous video I used a Pentium 2 333 to test if the board boots. For today I selected a Pentium 3 500 because I couldn't convince the board to boot with a frontside bus of 133 MHz and my Coppermine Pentium 3 at 1 GHz. It did boot however when the frontside bus was set to 100 MHz, resulting in a frequency of 750 MHz. Since I am not planning to run performance benchmarks, I decided to use this Pentium 3 500, which requires 2 volts, similar to the Pentium 2. As operating system, I will be using Windows 98 Second Edition. The graphics card is the GeForce 2MX, which appeared on several locations on my channel before. After installing the operating system, it was up to me to find the correct drivers that would work with the Sound Blaster Live chip on this motherboard. If you owned a sound card from Creative Labs, you may remember their setup process. I very much dislike it. Too many questions, requests to register, and asking for a lot of your details. Luckily you can skip most of it, but Creative Labs made sure to remind you that you haven't registered yet. But that is not the worst part. If you pick the wrong drivers, you may end up with a blue surprise. I tried many different drivers, mostly from official creative CD-ROMs you can find on the Vogons drivers library or the internet archive. And most of the time I ended up with a non-working installation of the audio hardware. Either the card was not detected at all, or Windows complained about an incompatibility, problems starting the device, or well, blue screens. Until I found an image that worked. Unfortunately those working drivers are WDM drivers. I wish I could have found working VXD drivers, but there wasn't enough time for it. But before we hear an audio signal from the Sound Blaster Live Motherboard Edition, let's hear a short message from PCBWay, the sponsor of today's video. PCBWay offers a cost effective way for prototyping, but is also capable of fulfilling large scale fabrication of your PCBs. Fast turnarounds, competitive pricing, as well as the high quality standards contribute to incredible customer satisfaction. PCBWay offers many more services including 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication and CNC machining. If you're looking for a partner to turn your ideas into reality, then you should definitely check out PCBWay.com. Links to PCBWay.com and my contributions to their shared project space are in the video description. Finally, the Sound Blaster Live drivers are successfully installed and we do have a speaker symbol in the taskbar. Now we just need to figure out what audio check to use for the speakers. Luckily, there is a page in the manual explaining the details. I'm going to connect my capture setup to the check labeled Line Out. And here we go! The first time in many years that this board produces an audio signal. That does not sound like the Canyon MIDI track. After all this effort to find the correct drivers, this board is still stubbornly silent. Well, not exactly silent. In desperation, I changed the audio checks, hoping for an easy fix. Unfortunately, there was still no audio output. But there was something odd that I noticed when holding down the board to remove the audio cable. The static noise changed when I pressed on the board. Oh, and there is something else I found out looking for an explanation. Don't ask me how I figured that out and why I tested this. So what is going on here? Is there a leg of the audio chip disconnected? We have seen loose solder joints on many Voodoo cards and this board isn't much younger. 
While looking around, pressing on different components on the board, I scared myself and pressing on the BIOS chip. That pop came from my speakers. Something near the BIOS chip seems to be causing this. So I explored the surrounding area and a few seconds later, I found the offender. This component, which looks like a voltage regulator sitting between two PCI slots, seems to be the reason for the sound chip not working properly. I'm sorry for the poor audio quality, but this is the first music generated by this motherboard. Under the microscope we can see that the tab of the regulator has lifted from the board. That is an amazing spot for this regulator, surrounded by the BIOS, two PCI slots and a capacitor. If you're in a tricky situation like this, then you should do what one of my Patreon members suggested. Cover plastic or anything that can potentially be destroyed by heat with Captain tape. Unfortunately, when this information reached me, I was already done. So you won't see this Captain tape during my repair. But I would have had a much easier time had I covered the PCI slots with it. At least I only had to desolder two pins to remove the component. I use low melt solder to carefully remove the chip. And after 2 or 3 tries, the IC comes off without issues. Under the microscope we can see that the underside of the IC is brown. This side is supposed to be connected to the board, but it looks corroded and full of rust. Here you can see that the top layer can be scrapped off easily with my tweezers. Initially I thought this was the pad from the board, but luckily this wasn't the case. After a few rounds of applying solder and removing it again with a wick, I got the metal surface of the IC nice and clean, covered in a thin layer of fresh solder. At least this looks decent again. We also need to clean the pins from the low melt solder. You don't want to have this mixed with a fresh solder when we return this component to the board. And of course, we also need to clean the pads. There is some low melt solder residue which should be removed before we reinstall the IC. The solder on the large pad seems to be corroded as well. Or lost its melting capabilities? I got rid of the old stuff using a solder wick and several rounds of applying fresh solder. This big pad is a connection to ground. So the IC was not properly grounded and as a result didn't function as intended. The challenge will be to put this IC back on the board, due to the limited space available. I plan to heat the pad and the tab of the IC with a soldering iron and in the split second where the solder is liquid, move the IC to the right position. The large pad on the motherboard is most likely connected to a larger copper plane below the solder mask, which is quite good at diverting heat away from the IC. Timing is everything. But after only a few tries, I succeeded in putting the chip in a place where it is good enough for me. I'm quite happy with the location of the chip and the fact that I didn't damage anything in that area with a soldering iron. Let's not forget the two terminals and we're done with this repair. The question is if this board finally works as intended and please us with a Sound Blaster Live audio output. Ah, creative again. Changing my window setup wherever possible. But finally, we have our audio chip working. This wasn't the video I had planned, but I hope you still liked the content. If you did, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel to not miss future videos. You can also become a Patreon if you'd like to support this channel further. The last minute or so will have some clips of the Sound Blaster Live experience application, which you may remember from your time owning a Sound Blaster Live sound card yourself. Share your memories in the comments if you'd like, I'm looking forward to reading them all. And that is all I have for you today. Thanks for watching and I will see you in one of my other videos.
Welcome to the SB Live experience. 